Morning. Morning. What's your name? I'm Joe. I'm the new guy. Hey, Joe. I'm Ted. Welcome. We'll get you signed in here. Supervisor told me to meet the crew out here this morning. Uh, I'm trained to be with working with the uh, sand coordinator. We got a lot going on today. We're just getting started. Biggest hazard you got to be concerned about right now is all the truck traffic. If there's a safe zone over there. You see the yellow tape. Okay. Okay. Uh, the chemicals are over next to the blender over there. You notice we have another area, danger area, marked out with the yellow tape there. You want to stay out of those areas. I want you to pull over here down by the second trailer. Now you need to back in and I'll spot you. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll be right over there. All right. That's good. Welcome aboard, Joe. Have a seat. You ever uh, done a JSA or job safety analysis before? Yeah, they talked about JSAs in our orientation and training, but the company I worked for didn't have much of a safety program. In fact, that's one of the reasons I quit. Uh, I had a friend that worked there that was hurt pretty bad, and I just had about all I could take. I just didn't feel they were very serious about safety. Our management does care, and we watch out for each other. The company takes the responsibility for everyone's safety and health very seriously. That's why we're having this talk here this morning. Now, I've verified that you passed all your OSHA training and see that you've done your orientation and have your safe land card. Yes, I had to take my safety training before they would even let me come to location. Well, good. That's as it should be. Well, let's get started this morning. We're planning to pump four stages today. Let's go over the, the JSA here that the crew wrote this morning. I have a copy. I'm going to read it, but I want you to ask any questions. First, let's talk about the uneven ground here. Watch your step especially around the spill containment areas, the iron in the hoses. There's so lots of trip hazards out there. So that brings us to the, the chemicals and other substances we have here. We have safety data sheets for all the potentially dangerous substances on site. The one substance you're most likely to deal with in your job is respirable silica dust, or frac sand, or propant as we call it. We call it propant because it literally props the formation open to allow the gas and liquids to flow into the well. But the dust from that can be a serious hazard. That surprises me. I didn't know sand was a hazard. I didn't realize it was such an issue. Sand's everywhere. You're right, Joe. Silica is one of the most common substances on Earth. We live with it every day. It's not the sand that's the problem, it's the dust. Take a look at this hazard alert that NIOSH and OSHA wrote along with some folks from the industry. Uh, it has some very good information about the hazards of silica. The sand used in hydraulic fracturing contains up to 99% silica. Silica is the second most common element in the Earth's crust. You may also know it as beach sand. Silica, also called quartz or crystalline silica, is the same mineral that glass is made from and is used in cement, concrete, and many other common products. Silica that is small enough to be breathed or respirable is 10 microns or smaller in size and looks like tiny shards of glass. This dust is called respirable crystalline silica, or RCS, and can be breathed deep into your lungs. We also have this list of practical solutions to protect workers from silica. We keep it posted here on the bulletin board, and it's also posted on all our job sites. Now take a look at this safety data sheet for silica, too. Like I said, we're going to work hard to make sure you aren't exposed to silica while you're out here. But it sounds like they're starting to pump now, so we better get through this so you can get to work. In safety management, we always try to engineer out the hazards as best we can so people aren't exposed. That means using things like vacuum systems, water mist on the sand, air showers for the employees to clean them off. If we can't control the hazard with engineering controls, we use administrative controls. That means training people about how to work upwind from the sand, putting up signs, doing your training, Make sure you understand where the hazards are and how to protect yourself. NIOSH researchers identified eight primary points of silica dust generation on hydraulic fracturing sites. Engineering controls, such as vacuum collection systems or bag house collection, can capture the fine, virtually invisible, respirable crystalline silica dust that is the biggest hazard. Dust collection and other engineering controls, combined with safe work practices, provide the best protection for workers and should be used first before personal protective equipment like respirators. Engineering controls involve equipment changes but are the most effective means of reducing exposure to dust. 
For each point of dust generation on a hydraulic fracturing worksite, there are simple as well as more complex controls that can be used to reduce silica particles from creating a potential exposure hazard. Review the hazard alert. What about this dust mask? The company had me get a fit test for this respirator and I'm just not sure when I need to use it. Respiratory protection is very important. As you know from your training, this is your last line of defense against the silica dust hazard. Now our industrial hygienists have tested those areas and identified the problem areas for us out there. When you're working around the sand master, when we're moving sand on the blender, you need to wear this mask. If you don't, if you're not sure, wear it anyway. Everyone's going to be watching you to make sure that you have this mask on. It's pretty hot out of here, Ted. The dust mask will just make it worse. Here, Joe, take one of these straws. Try breathing through that. Now breathe through it for a little bit. Imagine walking around having to breathe through that. The disease caused by silica, silicosis, is just like breathing through that straw. Wow, that's tough. Breathing RCS can cause one of the oldest known occupational lung diseases, silicosis. Silicosis is an irreversible disease caused when lung tissues react to trapped silica particles, causing scarring and reducing the lung's ability to take in oxygen. If exposure to silica dust occurs at extremely high concentrations, silicosis can occur as soon as within a few months. Workers who breathe crystalline silica day after day are at a greater risk of developing silicosis. Silicosis can cause lung cancer and other diseases, including increased risk of tuberculosis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and kidney and skin disease. OSHA and NIOSH have set guidelines for how much silica breathed into the lungs could potentially cause harm. These guidelines are the permissible exposure limit and the recommended exposure limit. So think real hard, Joe, before you take that respirator off. Make sure you're in a safe area. We do our part here to try to make sure we provide a safe work environment, but you've got to do your part too. Now we've got replacement cartridges for that respirator if you need them. We want you to change them every day. We want to keep your respirator clean and in good shape. Respiratory protection, if used correctly, can protect you from exposures. However, this depends on you using the respirator correctly, being clean-shaven, and getting a good fit. In some cases, silica dust concentrations can be greater than the protection factor of a respirator, so it's better to rely first on engineering controls and work practices. When respirators are used, employers must have a respiratory protection program that meets OSHA's respiratory protection standard. This program must include proper respirator selection, fit testing, medical evaluations, and training. If respirators are provided, use at least a NIOSH-approved N95 respirator. If the silica level is more than 10 times the PEL, a half-face respirator is not protective, and a respirator that offers a greater level of protection, such as a full-face piece respirator, which will protect workers at a silica level up to 50 times the PEL, must be used. Full-face powered air purifying respirators, known as PAPR, provide more protection than half-face air purifying respirators. In general, workers find PAPRs to be more comfortable. Okay, Ted, I really appreciate the info, and I'm sure my family does too. Now I understand why it's so important to follow company policy. Well, here's a good example of a company rule for you. When's the last time you shaved, amigo? You know that respirator is not going to seal with that stubble on your face. Okay, sorry. I get it now. All right, well, I got some shaving cream and disposable razors back there. Let's go get that stubble off. Thanks, Ted. Thanks again. The employer has put into place health and safety controls, policies and procedures to protect you on the job site. It is important for the sake of your safety that you follow the employee rules and bring to your employer's attention any problems with their controls or your personal protective equipment. Employers have a responsibility to provide a workplace free from recognized hazards for all workers, and employees have the right to confidentially report any unsafe and unhealthy working conditions to OSHA. OSHA and NIOSH created a hazard alert on worker exposure to silica during hydraulic fracturing and both agencies have many other resources available on this topic. For more information and resources on silica and hydraulic fracturing, visit OSHA.gov or nationalstepsnetwork.org.